Hey guys, this is Jay Calderon with Jay Unboxing here, giving you a personal prediction for Troy Williamson versus Josh Kelly. And as always, this is just my take, of course. Your predictions can be left down in the comments section below. This is a very, very even fight, a pick 'em in every sense of the word. So certainly would love to hear your picks for this one as well, down in the comments section below. And a little bit of fight info here. We have Williamson versus Kelly, as mentioned, taking place at the Newcastle Arena in Newcastle, England. What a coincidence. This will be airing on Channel 5 over in the UK in the junior middleweight division with the British version of the title held by Williamson on the line. And oh, what a fun domestic fight this one will be. And it has world-level implications to boot, so it's certainly going to have a lot at stake, not to mention the fact that it's a very good domestic fight. Williamson will be looking to remain unbeaten, but is taking on the toughest test of his career, at the very least on paper. Meanwhile, Kelly needs to win this fight if he's ever going to be the fighter many expected him to be prior to that Avanesian loss. So this is really an important fight for him as well. Both kind of need it for that legitimacy. And as mentioned, it's a legitimate pick em fight, and it's kind of hard to split the pair. They both have their strengths, their weaknesses, you kind of know what those are, and they kind of match up against each other very well, so it's certainly a very interesting fight, and you have to kind of wonder who's going to come out on top. Will the pressure of Williamson prevail, or does the movement of Kelly pull it off? Let's find out and break this one down. And we'll start with the champion here. For Williamson to win, I think you want to keep pressing forward. Now, Josh Kelly likes a fight that's neat, that's kind of easier for him to control, both in terms of distance or the pace of the fight, even just the kind of rhythm of the fight overall. You need to make it a bit messier, push him back a bit more, make him have to burn through those reserves. This doesn't mean that you have to be wild or reckless, but it does mean that you have to make the fight a little less neat than Kelly would prefer. You box better coming forward anyway. You're going to have a harder time trying to box on the back foot. And Kelly, honestly, is going to try and utilize this to his advantage, too. He's going to be looking to move and counter anyway, but cut off the ring and then get to attacking. Make your movement matter. And as I mentioned, do this intelligently. Don't square up or try to force it too early. Cut off the ring, use your brain, and then in those shots, when you have them a bit more cornered, start putting them on them. Use that jab to get inside and then start attacking the body to try to slow some of that movement down. I would also say land the left hook. For starters, it's a nice shot in your arsenal, so it's certainly something you're gonna to wanna to look to land anyway, but it's also a timed shot, a shot that you can actually kind of pace it out and find it when Kelly is looking to capitalize and counter him with it. This, of course, can also help you line up that solid right hand, which is a shot you're gonna be looking to try and throw anyway, and this is certainly a way of trying to get to that point a little bit quicker for you. Also, of course, he has the speed advantages. He's going to be looking to use that as much as possible. If you can time it in between those shots of his and cut the distance off because it's your lead hand, this makes up for a little bit of that time differential between the two of you, and you might be able to get home with that bigger shot, line up some of your work, and really make him pay for it as the fight progresses. And finally, I would say don't smother your work. While you want to come forward, and again, you want to do it in an intelligent manner, and while you want to, of course, try to land that shot up close, that shot being the left hook, you don't want to smother your work. Don't simply lunge in without purpose. Fight with the right timing and at the right distance to utilize your work to the best of your ability. Also, when moving forward and pressing, don't forget to try and step back just a bit to line up your shots and allow for more extension on them, really get a snap going, as opposed to just smothering it and making those kind of harder to score shots work for you to some degree, but maybe not in the judge's eyes. You want to make sure that you're getting the total credit you deserve for your work. When you are in too close, at the very least attack the body of Kelly, as I briefly mentioned, to try and slow him down as the fight moves on, and then get some of that better work going in those latter frames. Now, switching over to Kelly, for Kelly to win, I think you need to land those combinations. Punches and bunches are really your best friend here, and more than anything else, than just a specific shot, I think it's going to be your key to victory in this fight. The more you can let your hands go without putting yourself too far out there, the better. Obviously, you throw a fast right counter. You're going to want to use that, but don't make it your sole shot. It has to lead to more. Build into the fight as well. As the rounds move on and you're allowing for yourself to maybe build a bit of a lead to kind of get things going, then you're going to want to let those hands go a little bit more in the fight. To number one, show the judges and Williamson himself that he's not wearing you down, which could be in his plans. But number two, to make sure that you're actually scoring and winning those later frames as you are hopefully in your for your sake, 
pulling away in this contest. But that starts by getting those hands going and throwing those combinations. I would also say don't pull straight back. Troy will look to walk through your shots. He's going to hope and assume that he probably can. You're moving up. He's probably a naturally bigger guy, or at the very least has been at the weight for a while. So he might have to move through your punches, but he's going to want to do it anyway because he needs to get his work done. And if he can do that, he will be continuously swinging, hoping to land those shots that hurt you. If you're just going straight back, that's going to spell disaster for you. You're getting tagged. And Troy can pop a little bit, so you definitely don't want to just give him those kind of free shots. Instead, use angles, head movements, step side to side. Don't be a predictable target, in other words. Simply mix it up. You don't want to always have to step back at all, for that matter, anyway. Sometimes step in, hold a bit if you have to, turn him, press him back, make him use his reverse muscles, if you will, which are going to tax you a bit more, and then continue on after you've reset. And, as I mentioned and kind of alluded to there, stand your ground. Yes, your style is to be a bit more of a mover, a boxer, a boxer puncher at your very best. That being said, there are going to come points in this fight where I predict you are going to need to stand your ground. Really doesn't mean that you have to change your style, but you need to show him you're willing to stand in the pocket and earn his respect, especially early as you're going to try and convince him that what he has planned isn't going to work. Block his shots, make him pay, then reset. Again, not always having to be in such a hurry to escape. Take your time, press him forward if you need to. If he thinks you're giving up too much ground, it builds up too much momentum for Williamson, and you simply can't have that. You need to use your ability to stand your ground to be his momentum killer and allow for you to actually have some success by inside fighting it out a bit more before you get back to that natural boxing and moving style that you like to present in these fights. Now, depending on what sports book you have, the odds are pretty close for either guy. But in terms of my pick here, I'm going with the perhaps slight underdog in Kelly, or at least based upon the book that I happen to see. But in all honesty, it really is a pick -em. It's a 50-50 fight if ever there was one this year. I just feel his movement and faster hands will prevail in this particular fight. Williamson will have his moments, but I think Kelly might surprise him with a few shots. Enough countering to tame him enough. Kelly will counter. He's going to do that, and he'll land that right hand over the top and use his movement to avoid most of the danger coming his way. I also, as mentioned, do think he will stand his ground when he needs to, at the very least enough to try and make sure that he's keeping control of the fight. I think it might get closer down the stretch, but I do see Kelly weathering the storm and earning a close decision. Josh Kelly via close but fair unanimous decision. Now, in terms of the betting odds, as I mentioned, they're a little bit for Williamson here, a little bit for Kelly here, but ultimately it's basically just a minus 110 for both, as it is pretty much a pick em fight depending on exactly what book you're looking at. Again, that kind of swings with betting, but in general, it's a pick em fight. In terms of that, it really just is a matter of who you think's going to win. I mean, I'd put a pretty decent sized bet on Kelly, nothing gigantic or anything, but a mid sized bet for sure. Do think he's winning this fight. Again, could go either way but it is a decent bit of value there and certainly something you should take advantage of if you believe either guy is going to win this fight pretty strongly. And I have not found an over-under for this fight just yet, not close enough anyway, but when I do find one, I will post it as a pinned comment in the comments section. My guess is it'll be around the 9.5 to 10.5 range because I do think, again, it's an even money, close fight. Typically, they too do tend to go the distance, at least in terms of the books, but when I let you know, or when I have it rather, I will let you know and I will pin it as a top comment. Until then, those are your betting odds. And you can check down in the description box for my current prediction record when I post this video, but let me know what you guys think down in the comments. would love to hear your thoughts, your bets, so on and so forth. Again, it's a very good pick of fight. would love to hear what you guys think. Who do you think wins this fight and how? Leave it in the comments. would love to hear that. Please be sure to like, share, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter at jcaldron underscore J-O-B. You can email me at jayunboxing at gmail.com. Would love to hear from you there. Also, be sure to check out Jay Unboxing for schedule, results, betting odds, rankings, all that good stuff. And as always, until next time.